Wilson, Mary Catherine Hamm, Brian Neiman, today's newsmakers, and you, the morning majority, 630. W-M-A-L. 807, and we are here with Scott Rasmussen, pollmeister extraordinaire. He knows what's going on in people's heads. Finger is on the pulse <laughs> exactly. of the American people. And I want to ask you, Scott, a little bit about the debate coming up in light of some of your poll numbers. There's some poll numbers that show voters preferring a generic Republican to President Obama, which seems like a good sign for them if they can just become generic enough. <laughs> 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 and then the other thing was uh, you've got one poll showing 49% see Romney is very qualified, but people are less confident about all these other guys. Is there anything they can do to make those numbers move? Well, sure. The, uh, let's start with the, the last thing you brought up, Mary Catherine. Um, the other Republican candidates, other than Mitt Romney, do have that stature gap. Right. And the biggest way they can overcome that is by beating Mitt Romney. Uh, I mean, bluntly, in the short term, that is going to be their challenge. And if they are successful at uh, becoming the Republican nominee, their numbers will improve uh, partly because of that fact. Uh, when you talk about the general election, uh, people get all uh, flustered and excited talking about these early debates and who the Republican nominee is going to be. Uh, none of us really know at this point in time. But what we do know is the election is going to be a referendum on President Obama uh, unless there is a major distraction from the Republican candidate. And that's why he struggles in the generic ballot. Uh, people are evenly divided on his presidency. His job approval ratings are consistently in the mid to high 40s. And unless the economy turns around, um, the Republicans are going to want to keep the spotlight focused entirely on the Democrats. So they want to be as generic as possible, just as you said. (laughs) Hey, Scott, the the elections are not won in the left or the right. We all know this. I mean, the the conservatives are always going to go Republican, and by and large, the liberals are always going to go Democratic. It's that mushy middle that makes the decision, the swing voters in the middle. What do we know about where the mushy middle is right now? Because sometimes they go left, sometimes they go right. You know, the... uh They will go probably with the economy, and the group that is most significant is is not actually someone that you normally think of is in that mushy middle. It's white working-class Democrats. These are people who voted for Hillary Clinton over Barack Obama in the Democratic primary. They voted for Barack Obama in 2008, but for Republicans in 2010. And they have tremendous economic anxieties. Uh, What we also know is this group is concerned about... uh, the spending and deficits that we're seeing, and they're very frustrated. They don't think that either party is serious about addressing these issues. And as a practical matter, a plurality of third par- of unaffiliated voters would prefer to see a third party candidate rather than either Obama or the Republicans. Have you broken it down to look? Is it too early to do this? About uh, when you look at how older people will vote and you know, what they're thinking right now, and younger people. I mean, it seems like the Democrats are definitely picking up on the meta scare. Uh, theme is do they see something in the polls that indicate people that the elderly are are, are worried about that? Absolutely. Uh, the story of the health care debate. Uh, if you go back to 2006, 2008, uh, Democrats had a huge advantage on that issue in terms of which party people trusted, and uh, they rode that to electoral victories. And then President Obama came out with his um, a reform proposal, and ever since then it was a Republican issue, and the Republicans did very well by arguing for repeal of the health care reform in 2010. In January of this year, Republicans had a 14-point edge on the health care issue. Paul Ryan came out with his plan. That advantage is gone. It is now dead even on health care. And it is an issue that resonates very strongly with seniors. Well, but obviously Paul Ryan has always said that if you're over the age of 55, your Medicare isn't going to change. Are the Republicans just doing a bad job of getting that message out? Or are... You know, senior citizens not buying into that message. Um, first of all, you have to remember that whenever politicians say anything, voters discount it. Okay. Um, you know, when when a politician says, "I'm going to raise taxes only on the rich," yeah. people say, "Oh, yeah, right. Mm-hmm. You're going to find me as rich." And so, when they hear somebody talking about tinkering with Medicare in a substantial way. Um, and they say, well, nobody over 55 will be affected. They just aren't prepared to believe that. And, uh, you know, I think Paul Ryan deserves great credit. And, and by the way, President Obama does, too, for bringing up health care as an issue that needs to be addressed. Uh, the costs are out of control. It is beginning to have huge impacts on our budgets. Uh, but neither side has come up with a solution that voters are ready to embrace at this point in time. If Mitt Romney is the leader right now in the Republican field, 
do you, I don't know if you, if you noticed it. It seems to me like maybe some of the other guys, like tonight at the debate, will almost gang up on him. Is is that something that he would should be concerned about? And do you see that happening at, at a debate like tonight? That people will the other the other field will go after Romney, attack him because he's the leader. Well, he is the modest front runner at the moment, uh, and just like Rudy Giuliani was the front runner at this time four years ago. I don't think we're anywhere near the place we can say he's really the leader of the pack. Uh, he is going to certainly take some uh, take some shots at the event, but I don't think it's going to be all ganging up on Mitt Romney because there's other issues. That, you know, we have a couple of um, establishment-approved candidates like Mitt Romney and Tim Pawlenty. We will have, we may have some new entries like a Rick Perry into the race who will shake things up. And there is going to be room for an outsider candidate, for one person who can make a move in Iowa and get themselves moved up into the national platform. And until we get to that point uh, sometime in, you know, very late in this year, uh, the field is still forming and people are looking to shine on their own rather than bring somebody else down. Scott, can you recall a, a, a point? where in a debate somebody said something that just captured the American public's imagination and you saw them come from complete obscurity to, to, at, to the top of the heap? I mean, it does happen occasionally, doesn't it? You know, it happens. Uh, the most famous uh, moment that we saw in a, in a presidential nomination contest was Ronald Reagan saying he paid for that microphone mm -hmm. and taking control of things in New Hampshire. But the more common way this happens is uh, the Mike Huckabee model from four years ago. Four years ago at this point in time, he was an asterisk in the polls. That's Nobody right. knew who he was. Um, he went into living rooms in Iowa, and he convinced an awful lot of people that he was worth fighting for. He won the Iowa caucus, and that got him a spot in the top tier. I mean, he ended up getting essentially the same number of delegates as, uh, as Mitt Romney. Uh, and so that is probably the way it will go. Somebody will make their move in Iowa, and again, all that guarantees you is a, a you know, a, a, a ticket to the dance. You get into the serious contender range, and then you have to see what happens there. Uh, well, the and I don't want to denigrate Mike Huckabee's experience, but a lot of that is charisma, and we're going to talk about that absolutely. coming up. But how much does that matter? Like when you're talking to folks, very much, especially in those one-on-one, -on -one, small retail political environments. I mean, it is hard to picture anybody as president of the United States. So when somebody walks in and says that's the job they're looking for, they have to sell you on every level. Uh, certainly you have to feel comfortable with their general policy attitudes. You have to feel comfortable that they're competent to get things done. And you have to have that charisma that makes people want to follow you. And that, that is the unknown. You know, we can say candidates look good on paper. Uh, sometimes baseball teams look good on paper and they fall right. apart when they get on the field. It is the person who can walk into that room and make that connection. That's why Donald Trump was always, uh, you know, such a misfit when he was talking about running. Could you imagine him walking into a living room in Iowa and <laughs> connecting with voters out there? No, not really. All right, Scott, great to have you on the show. We appreciate your time. Look forward to seeing you again. Scott Rasmussen, pollster, author of Mad as Hell here on WMA.